Learn how weight gain on college campuses has changed. Here, students give their take on the current Gmail screening controversy. And find out how the black and blue hip-hop group is shaping up this semester. All this and more tonight on Wildcast. This is Wildcast. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Max Efron. And I'm Jackie Kent. Thanks for joining us tonight. Maintaining a healthy diet on a college campus is difficult, and it seems to only be getting harder as years pass. Wildcast reporter Karen Lizarraga has the details on the college weight gain struggle. It's the beginning of a new school year, and for freshmen, the big transition from high school to the University of Arizona. As they have come to gain knowledge, they're also known for gaining weight. Throughout the past year, it has been known as the Freshman 15, but now the University of Arizona is referring to it as the Freshman 25. I think they gain it because you know, college is like stressful, and uh, you know, food is like really easy to get right here. Just go to the Union, buy some fries, Burger King, or whatever. Living under time constrictions and stress, freshmen find it hard to manage healthy habits and not enough daily exercise. Relying on snacks and the classic ramen noodles. Living in a dorm is a difficult task where they do not have their own kitchen and have to work around other people's schedules. I think it's easy to gain weight here if you don't know how to cook. Like, I can't cook and I live in the dorm, so I rely on the union, which is bad because you gain weight like that. Many grab their cat cards and slide it down at the many restaurants the union has to offer, such as Burger King, Panda Express, and much more. Well, the way I maintain my weight is by going to the rec center and definitely watching what I eat. Um, you know, you just have to make a more conscientious effort to not eat stuff that's bad for you. And it's everywhere because, you know, all the stuff, most of the stuff in the union, you know, it's just, it's easier to, you know, oh, I'll just grab some fries, I'll just grab this, whatever. But, you know, you just have to be more aware. According to Harvard School of Public Health website, a minimum of two and a half hours of intense aerobic activity per week is needed to burn off the right amount of calories to keep the weight off. So next time you think of grabbing your cat card and heading to the union, remember Freshman 15 has added its own 10 pounds. Reporting for UATV, I'm Karen Lizarraga. UAPD continues to search for a person of interest in an ongoing criminal investigation. This unidentified man is wanted for questioning in regards to a case involving a stolen credit card. Officers ask anyone with information to call 88 Crime or UAPD. That number and more information can also be found on our Facebook page. Just search facebook.com facebook slash UATB3. One club on campus that has gotten a head start on the school year is TriCats. It's a club you don't hear about much, but these athletes work year-round to prepare for triathlons. The TriCats have been recycling on the mall in front of the student union to recruit new members, in addition to their twice-a-day workouts. Students of all athletic ability are welcome to apply. The TriCats also put on fundraisers to not only benefit the club, but to introduce the community to multi-sport races and raise money for various causes. To apply online or to get more information, visit ArizonaTriCats.com. Their first triathlon is coming up on September 22nd in Tempe, Arizona. Everyone knows finding an open parking meter on campus is a trial and finding enough change to fill up that parking meter is even more of a hassle. But a new app created by three UA alumni may be the solution you're looking for. Wildcast reporter Hannah Polinuk has more. Three 2012 alumni of the University of Arizona's Eller College of Management have invented a mobile app that allows you to pay for metered parking. Austin Weiss, Thomas McGuire, and Ross Schenken came up with the idea after repeatedly having to run back to fill up their parking meter while eating on University Boulevard. The app is available for free for iPhones and Androids. To use the app, first register your vehicle and credit card information. Then, enter your meter code, the amount of time you'd like to park, and press Agree. When finished, a 35 cent convenience fee will be applied to your total, and an enforcement agent will be notified of your transaction. The app has received mixed reactions among Tucson residents. I don't really carry around change that much or cash. 
Um, so just the other day, like I couldn't pay for a meter on university because I didn't have anything but my debit card with me and my license. So um, it would have been a lot more convenient if I could pay with like an app and my card. I have concerns about being, about the whole GPS positioning being tracked. Um, I just, I like to be more anonymous than that. The city of Tucson and Park Genius will end their three month pilot at the beginning of November. City of Tucson Parkwise Program Administrator Donovan Durbin said that the program has been successful at introducing Tucson residents to new ways to pay for metered parking. This winter, the city plans to replace all current meters in the downtown and university areas with meters that accept alternative methods of payment. As for Park Genius, the trio plans to expand to several other cities and build partnerships with local businesses. Reporting for Wildcast, I'm Hannah Polinick. I guess my days of carrying around rolls of quarters are finally coming to an end. Yeah, I'm so sorry, Max, but it's that actually looks really great. I'll have to download that. Stay with us after the break for a look into this week's upcoming weather. Thank you, Shay. Google has come under some scrutiny recently from the public for their privacy laws. Wildcast reporter Chelsea Hempel investigated how UA students, who are active Gmail users, feel about the ongoing controversy. Sources say that Google is experiencing a lawsuit on how they actually tailor their Gmail account users' advertisement to what is actually in their email. Information gathered from a Google correspondent said that all users of email must necessarily expect that their emails would be subject to automatic processing. Some people believe it is an invasion of privacy, and some people think that it is convenient to have ads tailored to your lifestyle. Google spells out the way they will be handling privacy information and says that the privacy of the Gmail customer is top priority, but this raises some concerns when Edward Snowden revealed that the National Security Agency gathered facts from Gmail users and other websites. Guardian newspaper stated that the program that Google is involved with is called PRISM, P-R-I-S-M. This gives NSA access to their private files, but Google denies these allegations. In an interview conducted with Cushion Schreiber via email, who is the head of the Security Information Office here on campus, he said that it is imperative for us to know our privacy policies when signing up for certain things like email or even shopping online. It is important because U.S. companies do end up giving out private information to federal agencies when there is a valid warrant or subpoena. We interviewed Jacob and Yoseline. Yoseline is a junior here at U of A. Jacob is an alumni from the U of A, and now he's starting the police academy. Obviously, I believe that oh, wait, them <laughs> looking through people's emails is a bit intrusive, but I personally don't have a problem with it because I have nothing to hide in my email, but I feel like others could have a problem with it. I'm kind of indifferent about that just because I'm used to it. Uh, a lot of people might not know that Facebook does the same thing. A lot of sites do the same thing. Whenever you talk to your friends on Facebook, if you mention certain words a lot, um, they'll, t they'll tailor those ads on the side to that. Google affiliates neglected to respond on the subject matter. Reporting at University of Arizona for Wildcast, I am Chelsea Hemphill. I can understand why that would be a problem because on campus too, speaking of privacy problems, officials now say that the UA public login for Wi-Fi isn't that secure, which isn't really anything new, but I guess some people's information has been taken, so. I still use it every day. <laughs> so, so you can take Max's information. Yeah. So all of you out there, <laughs> look for Max. Two people have now been charged in last week's Chicago shooting that injured 13 people, including a three-year-old boy. 
Police say 21-year-old Byron Champ and 20-year-old Kawain Gatewood were charged this week in connection to the incident at Cornell Square Park in the city's southwest side. But officials say while the boys played a significant role in the shooting, neither is believed to have pulled the trigger, and this investigation is still open. The local county animal shelter, Pima Animal Care Center, has placed thousands of dogs and cats into permanent homes, but it is constantly facing the challenge of staying in budget. Wildcast reporter Ann Eloriaga has the story. This is Teddy, a lovable, happy, and very lucky dog. Teddy was adopted by Megan McCauley from the Pima Animal Care Center. <coughs> Teddy was marked on clearance and cost $25 after only being at the shelter for two months. Megan claims if she had not adopted Teddy, his future would have been cut short. She had told us that there was a no-kill shelter, but I think definitely at some point they would have had to because their kennels were full to the brim. Many of the animals at Pima Animal Care Center have been there for only a few weeks. However, this is verging on too long. The shelter built in the 1960s ideally serves around 450 animals. Today it is serving 790. As well as serving a maximum amount of animals, Pima Animal Care Center is well understaffed. They rely on volunteers to just get by. Justin Gallick, PAC's shelter manager, discussed how volunteers were the backbone to the shelter. As the manager for almost five years, Gallick understands the importance of their free help, especially in regards to staying in budget. Pima Animal Care Center is a state-run entity and receives state funding. A new county bond alike package which, include, which would include funding for a new animal shelter is in the works. Unfortunately, the bond package will not be up for election until 2015 or 2016. So the question arises, how will the community help Pima Animal Care Center until new funding comes? I think it's a really good thing to do when a lot of people ask me about where to get dogs. I always say go local to the shelters because there's always a dog that's for you and they all need to find homes and I think it's a great thing that they do trying to get these animals a good home because they really deserve them. I am Anna Loriaga reporting for Wildcast. For more information or to volunteer at Pima Animal Care Center, please check out www.pimaanimalcare.org. Stay with us after the break for a sports rundown. I'm Derek Williams, the former U of A Wildcat, and you're watching UA TV. Don't change the channel. People may tune out someone they see on a media and trying to sell newspapers. So Extra few hours of having to swipe your cat card to get in at night might be keeping non-U of A students out of the library. And while some are traveling to Mexico for cheaper huh? gas, others are forced to pay those high prices at the pump. Students and parents are always invited to come cheer on the Wildcats. We'll see you back here next week for another edition of Wildcast. Arizona women's soccer moved to 5-1-3 on the season after picking up a Black and Blue Dance Crew is well known on campus for their intense hip hop routines. <coughs> Wildcast reporter Cordero McMurray got an inside look at the group's activities and their audition process. I'm Cordero McMurray and I am reporting from the University of Arizona on U of A's Black and Blue Hip Hop Crew. As the long line of new students wait outside in hopes of joining the hip hop crew, returning dancers are outside as well waiting to audition again. Classes, which we try to hold about once a month, where any level of dancer can come. We all just hang out, have a great time, learn some choreography, and it's a blast for everyone. The crew performs at a wide range of events and tournaments, including Bear Down Fridays, women and men's basketball and soccer games, and for the Phoenix Suns. After long hours of intense choreography and hard work, the hip-hop crew selects 22 dancers to join the Black and Blue dance crew. 
it's really a struggle to find a balance between people who are really good dancers and also people that have the personality too because we become such a family on Black and Blue. I've met all my best friends from being on Black and Blue and you know we spend like eight to ten hours a week together practicing and then performing and that's what makes the team so strong. That's why everyone knows about Black and Blue at U of A is because we're always around each other, we're always repping our gear. And we're a group of dancers who loves Juve, who loves performing, and we like love each other. Reporting from the University of Arizona for Wildcast News, I'm Cordero McMurray. A Marana man has decided to finally share his story after <coughs> nearly dying earlier this month when he fell from a cliff. Clark Prophet was rappelling with his wife and friends at a Utah National Park on Labor Day when he suddenly slipped. He fell approximately 80 feet, breaking several bones in his back, ribs, and left arm. Park rangers, as well as members of the Davis Monthan Air Force Base, arrived about nine hours after the accident to rescue him. He spent 12 days in a Las Vegas ICU and is now in Tucson for rehabilitation. Wow, well, that's awful. And now we'll be turning it over to sports reporter Chelsea Moe for this week's sports update. Chelsea. Thanks, Jackie. The University of Arizona women's soccer moved to 5-1-3 on the season after picking up a 4-1 victory over Hawaii on Friday night to wrap up non-conference matches. In men's tennis this past Sunday, sophomore Trevor James was crowned champion of his flight in the Aggie Invitational in Las Cruces, New Mexico in his very first tournament as an Arizona Wildcat. Arizona came out on top in the other two singles matches as well. The Cats will return into action this weekend in Tulsa, Oklahoma. This Saturday in football, it's Cats versus Dogs as Arizona ventures to Seattle, Washington to play the Huskies. The game starts at 4 and it'll be a game that you definitely don't want to miss. That's all for sports. Back to you. Thanks, Chelsea. As always, thanks for tuning in to Wildcast. You can watch us anytime online at uatv.arizona.edu or on our YouTube channel, UATVCH3. We'll see you next week for another edition of Wildcast.